Hi guys, so some of you watching will know this. what this is. This is a dashboard from a Range Rover P38. Range Rover were fairly early to the Central Electronics party and it shows there are some issues with the P38 that uh, perhaps were ironed out by other companies such as Audi uh, a few years later when uh, they jumped to full body control modules. So the P38 uses Central Electronics to a massive degree. And I would argue that there are some companies that are only now catching up to the level of integration that was in the P38, but the technology was arguably not ready for it. And the P38 is full of design compromises because things weren't quite able to be done the way they wanted it to. And perhaps they pushed a little bit too far. And anybody that owns these vehicles know that there are certain things and certain problems they are prone to. What this means is for a vehicle that was built at the beginning of 2000, you have unusually a dashboard like this, which is fully electronic. There is no mechanical speedo in here, although a lot of vehicles were using digital speedos at that time, or digital, sorry, were using speedos that were done electronically at that time. Um, the level of integration in here was something else. There is no trip counter, no odometer actually in the speedo. That is done completely by the ECU and the body, oh, sorry, ECU. That's done completely by the BECM, which is a body control module that is under the driver's seat and the dash. There's the beginnings of a CAN bus type system here, but it's not CAN. The system uses a clock and data line. It is bi-directional and it's used to talk to the door out stations the dashboard, the engine ECU and other things. As a result, the diagnostics connector on the P38 is a mismatch of about a dozen different signals. Well, maybe not a dozen, but quite a few. Everything on your dashboard is electronic. Um, there's very little that's actually done the old fashioned way. What is done the old fashioned way on the dashboard is then passed back to the BECM for information for that to use. In theory, if you knew what you were looking for and how to do it, you could log all of the parameters of the P38 in much a similar way that modern OBD2 cars do. You'd need to do some work, but it's doable. So we're going to have a tear into this and have a quick look um, and have a look, see what's on this board, have a look, see what's behind it, and just take a quick browse through what's actually on the backboard here and how everything goes together. So, as I say, it's quite early and you'll see that there are through hole chips on here. There's a good number of through-hole components combined with surface mount. There's stuff on here that if this were built slightly more recently wouldn't have been done that way. So let's just take a look at what we've got on the back of this board. Um, there are parts in here that are familiar from anyone with uh, any experience working on dashboards. And there's things on here that are going to make you say, well, what the hell are they thinking? So as I say, it's obviously a dual technology board, SMT, uh, SMD and through-hole. And we have a NEC processor here, which is what runs everything. So you've got a fair amount of punch up here in the dashboard. This is combined with a mask ROM and RAM. So this is, rather than a microcontroller, a complete computer system. Control signals out for the lights and various other things are handled by discrete logic. Again, not the way it will be done now. So looking at this from a modern point of view yes you probably still have a complete computer up in the dash that's not uncommon and with lcd based uh, color dashes and that you are almost certainly going to have a lot of processing power up there but you'd have a microcontroller so you'd have this this and this all in one device it would be using can uh, more likely you would then use a pld or fpga to generate all your outputs and inputs so your micro here is using this as scratch pad memory. The ROM here contains the messages, the code, the software that runs the dashboard and that. And then we have an I2C uh, EEPROM up here which holds um, anything that can be changed, anything that needs to be stored and recalled. I don't know how often or how frequently this is written to. Um, hopefully it's only when you turn the ignition on or off. These early chips had some problems with uh, their longevity and this quite commonly shows up in some of the early Volkswagen Audi stereos that lose their uh, settings or become possessed 
um, once the chip reaches the end of its life. So your digital outputs from these chips here drive these which are transistor networks. So rather than having, I think there's five in here, five power transistors, you have one package and these drive all of your lamps, your signals. Um, I believe the audio output which is down here is driven from these as well. We've got a little audio amplifier there as well. Um, and that's how all of this is controlled. The signals for the fuel gauge, um, temperature gauge, speedo and taco, I'm not sure how they're generated. We'll get this board out and we'll have a quick look at where those signals are coming from. We've got two regulators here. One is almost certainly going to provide power when the battery is off. Um, one will provide power when the battery is on. This thing is always powered, but it's supposedly asleep. Um, again, the P38 is uh, well known for battery related issues and that may contribute towards it. We've then got a very early LCD uh, transmissive display with three backlights. So if you lose your backlight in your P38 display, these are the two you need to change. Again, I want to have a look at this and see if there's any uh, scope for upgrading this to a slightly newer display. And certainly looking down here, if I tilt this up, you can see our board sits in two guides here. And then we've got a guide further on out here. So Range Rover obviously, sorry, Land Rover obviously thought that maybe we'll upgrade that in the, in the future. So anyway, let's tear in and see what we can find. So it looks like all we've got to do is remove a lot of crosshead screws. The crosshead screws also serve as the connection between the dashboard PCB and the gauges. So it's essential that these screws that I'm about to remove, so these three here, these three here, these three here, and these three here, are tight and clean. Um, not seen it on P38s, but I have seen it on Volkswagen Audi Group vehicles where gauges have played up, and it's quite simply been these screws are either very, very contaminated or uh, aren't even tight. So let's just spin these out. So it is possible and there is information um, which I'll post a link to down in the uh, description. It is possible to actually address and talk to this without the BECM um, and send messages to it. All of the dashboard messages are actually pre-programmed in the ROM so there doesn't appear to be the ability to send free, ha free coded messages. It would be nice. Um, Certainly, it's something that's been thought about. So we pull that up. This connector here just comes up, and then we can pull the ribbon for the LCD out. And in theory, we should, and we can't, there we go, be able to just lift that out. And we've got a connector on this side. No, we don't, that's a button. So why are we not coming free? We have a cable in the middle of the dash. Not quite sure what that would be for. If you look down here, you can see it. That's just a pin header and that comes off. What would that be for? Not totally sure. So we'll dive into this bit in a bit. So we're not a double sided load, we're single sided only. As you can see, and I say it is fairly low tech. The soldering on there looks like good quality. There's nothing that concerns me in there that's likely to cause problems with dry joints. And I don't know if you can see this. Um, let's zoom you down. But if you look around the lights there, you'll see that they're actually marked with their functions. Now, I know there are a few functions. Now, I know there are a few functions on this board that aren't actually normally used. 
Um, what are they labelled as? So it's service light I've never seen before. We've got spare. That's interesting. We've got a cruise light. Now these vehicles don't actually have a cruise light as default. So I do wonder. And that is definitely connected. That's connected to these transistor drivers down here. So that's interesting. There may well be a cruise light. Is there anything? Where are we looking? Hold this up to the light and see what we've got. So, although we've got... Well, that's interesting. Right, I can. Uh, we have a light sensor here which uh, I suspect means that the dashboard actually adjusts, adjusts its own illumination. I wasn't aware of that. So, yeah, but the cruise light, which should be here. Um, just trying to match this up. Just put that back in place. We've got a different. So we've got this labelled as brake pad, this labelled as cruise, and that's on these end ones. And I can't really show you, but the one marked cruise is the gearbox fault light, and the one marked brake pads is not fitted. But the lights are most definitely there. So I'm in, inclined to believe that those lights may actually work if they're fitted. So what else have we not got fitted on this dash? They're all there. So bottom one that just says spare. Hmm, there you go. I didn't expect to find that. So again, we've got CPU, RAM, ROM, and then we have various other chips with strange numbers on that I do not recognise. Uh, we've got adjustments here. So we've got, on the temperature, we've got V plus out and out. So we've got the same on fuel, V plus out and out. And then what is the middle gauge? That's TACO. So we've got our uh, course SIN in common in. So I don't quite understand how the uh, large gauges are driven, but they are driven with two waveforms, which I believe are out of phase. And the phase relationship controls where the needle is. I'm not 100% sure on how they work, but that's what we do. So we are almost certainly generating those waveforms somewhere. So we've got that Toshiba T857G there. We've got a T857G there, so I'm guessing those chips are our Speedo and our Taco. If you lost dash lights without blowing a bulb, then it's going to be one of these transistor drivers. Um, obviously, you could convert this to LED fairly easily. All our bulbs are driven from a common... Let's try and see what is actually the common there. Quite difficult to follow these tracks. My guess would be a common positive, so your diode would be facing towards the common, and then the back of the diode LED or your resistor would be driven from the other pad. And it is quite clear to see from each pad which way you'd be doing it. But there's not really much to mention. I mean, it is a computer in its own right. Um, it's fairly simplistic. You can see the amount of traces on the back there between the processor and the RAM and ROM. You could, if you knew what exactly what micro this is, um, and it is, I have looked this micro up so I know the data is available, you could reverse engineer the ROM and write your own one if 
you felt the need to do so. I don't know why you would. But that is a mask ROM, it's not flash, you can't program it. This is a small flash stroke EEPROM device which probably only contains configuration data for the dashboard. It almost certainly does contain the mileage. Um, it will contain your trip and uh, your odometer settings. I'm trying to think what else you can set. I think there is a speed limit can be set on this if I remember correctly. That will be stored there. But before you dive into there, it's almost certainly checksummed, and you may well find that there's calibration data in there. Although there are a lot of adjustments on that edge there. My guess for those adjustments, given that there's three each, um, that one is certainly associated with that block there, which is the taco. Is that these are calibration for the taco and the speedo, so probably not worth touching those. I don't see that there is necessarily any calibration for the fuel gauge, so I don't know how you do that. And yes, that's our weirdy diode that seems to come in. Uh, Things that are likely to fail on here, this, uh, oh we have got another adjust down here. Things that are likely to fail, um, you've got electrolytics on here, they could go bad. They are made by Nichicon, so the likelihood of them failing before the vehicle fails permanently is fairly low. There are quite a few tag tanks on here and they tend to work die horribly. So. If you get smoke or a dead dash, that would be why. We have protection dyes and input protection down here. There is no sign of a fuse. So what I'll do is I'll get a high resolution picture of this and I'll label the bits on it. So it looks like it's designed to uh, basically take a licking and keep on kicking. Um, I know that's not the correct phrase. We've got protection dyes here, so this may, in theory, survive a reverse power event if someone can put the battery the wrong way around. I know for a fact the ECM won't. So, what have we got here in this bit of plastic? So, we want to have a look in here, so we need to get this off. And it looks like we're just on plastic tabs. A word of warning if you are taking this apart yourself. This uses a lot of very early semiconductors, uh, which potentially puts it at risk of damage by static electricity. I wouldn't advise taking this apart to poke around it just out of curiosity. I'd say only take it apart if you need to do a repair. Right, separate the back. But what I actually want to do is take the lens off as well. So we've got couple of little clips here that we need to actually you know what we'll do that we'll come back to that actually there's no need to do it so your lens is held on by just clips around the edge you could probably quite easily by hand push those out yes you can so actually changing the glass is fairly straightforward So looking in here everything has moved we've got a plastic cover so again if you came at this from the front rather than taking the board off you can actually get in here and have a really good clean um, not that it needs it I mean this vehicle wasn't particularly well looked after and you can see how clean it is and you can see the colored lenses there as well so we have various things here so here we have that photo died so, yeah, there's obviously some provision made to either dim uh, the backlights, change the contrast of the LCD, or something. So, that's curious. That's uh, curious. Feature I wasn't aware. So, it looks like our individual dials lift out. Like that. And these are magnetic units, not... There you go. 
So these are magnetic meter movements, they're not um, bimetallic as a lot of these gauges are. Um, where does the LED come from then? Because there is a fuel LED which I'm curious. There we go, that's the uh, fuel LED in there I suspect. We'll go and have a look at that in a minute. Uh, Speedo and Taco appear to be individual units. And again, the same sort of setup. That's broken now. You can see the patterning on the back because you your uh, light the light effect on the ends. And then I suspect that is the same again. Yes, it's a magnetic move. And there we go. We've got another. Thing there, uh, what are they driven by? All ah, right, there are no normal bulbs on the outer edge here. Can we get our LCD out? I think we probably can. So that's our button. How is our LCD retained? There we go, we've got clips on the back for the LCD just in here. So if we push that in and that in and the LCD will just drop out. LCDs especially in car dashboards are prone to problems. Um, most notably the zebra strip which is this most notably the zebra strip which is this here tends to fail which causes segment outs that actually looks really well done it's been glued it's actually been glued if i catch the light you can see that's had a layer of glue put over it so i, I can't see one of these failing from the zebra strip your green color looks like it comes from a filter we'll take this apart a bit more as for replacing this with something else oh, we've got a green filter on the back here as well my thoughts this is a large, I believe it's a 16 by 2 dot matrix. That is a standard Hitachi interface. I will put money on that. And certainly they are the usual Hitachi chips. Japan Radio Corporation. So you could probably put an off the shelf LCD in here. But how you'd actually go about doing it, I'm not sure whatever you do has to match with this aperture that you'd need to make an adapter for your cables and you'd need to tie it up with that because one of the things I would uh, consider doing if I'd still had my P38 would actually be a nice white or green OLED screen which would give you a much better look um, in theory it's possible to emulate the character display so you could replace it with the graphics display and have other information on there there's a few options but i think you would struggle because of the dot size on that lcd you might struggle to find something that would fit and i could certainly see that you could clear this out and get an lcd in there because you've got really show you you've got a fair amount of space back there certainly enough for wiring and things like that but if anyone has heard of these having segment outs I'd be interested to know but I can't see that it's going to happen I'm not actually going to take this any further apart because there's no need and potentially um, out of all the parts in here this is possibly one of the more valuable parts and I'd like to keep that intact not only so I can experiment with it, not only so I can experiment with it, but um, I could see that being a part that someone, someone is likely to want. Can we get those little filters out? So there's your little light filters for the overheat and low fuel. 
So that's all there is to it. Um, it's a bit old and chunky compared to a modern dash. Um, what I might actually do is see if I can get hold of a slightly more modern dash and tear one apart as a comparison. But that's what's inside the P38 dash. Uh, gut feelings on failure points. I don't think the zebra strips are going to be a problem. The tag tant might be a problem long term. They can be unstable and they can fail. I suspect it will survive a reverse power event. But other than that, it's basic, um, but it's solidly built and should survive. Um, I just think it was probably a little bit early for it. Anyway, take care.